So I just put my son to bed and I was thinking to myself, you know, this would be a great topic to chat with you guys about. How has having a child changed my perception of the world and changed what I believe about myself and believe about other people? One of the things that we talked about before was, of course, the inputs, nature or nurture. Which one defines who you are? I'm now in a first row seat getting to see in this scenario, is it nature or is it nurture? And I can tell you being this close to the action, I still don't have a good answer. Uh, the Probably the best answer that I have is that it depends. And that's probably the answer for most things most of the time. Um, so we've been going to the pool on a, on a regular basis. And the question is, uh, my son is pretty, not tentative, but he's very careful. He's aggressive in some scenarios, but he's also very careful in other scenarios. So he's very respectful of the stairs. He's very respectful of the pool, um, but he will bang you a little bit or run into things without hesitation, get up and move on. And so the question is, what is his nature versus what is being fed into him from a nurture standpoint? And I, I, I'm not really sure. You know, I took him underwater twice yesterday, you know, just give him a big uh, puff of air on the face so it closed his eyes and his mouth. Boom, dunked him underwater. No problem. So I think that there's two things there. I think that his nature is that of he's okay with some adversity, right? But I also think the nurture portion of it is that I'm introducing more adversity on a regular basis to his system. We'll just call it a system, you know, because there's inputs into the system. If we walk this all the way back to what has it taught me about myself, uh, it's taught me that I am an incredibly selfish human being. And having someone that relies upon you for everything, where you can't turn it off, unless you've got a babysitter or something like that, but you can't, you can't turn it off for a week or two weeks, you know, and have your ultimate freedom. Uh, I've changed my work schedule. Now, you know, at, at six o'clock, I just, I go home. There were times in the past, especially when I was single, where I would be in the office often until eight or nine o'clock at night, or, or assistants and I would go back to my house, I would make them dinner, and we would, we would eat dinner six to seven, and then from seven to 10, uh, we would work. And that was probably three nights a week. And I just, doesn't exist. That does not exist. And that, and maybe that doesn't sound selfish, but if you asked me, what do you want to do with your free time? It would be some aspect of work, whether it's working in the yard, working on a project with a friend, something like that. The, the element of work is something that I'm drawn to. And I am now required to do things like watch a baby to make sure that it doesn't kill itself. That's, it's not work. And you cannot, regardless of what you believe, and I, and I thought this, right? I was guilty of this because I had a coworker, uh, actually an employee of mine that had two children while she worked for me. And selfishly, I looked at that like, you know, these, these are not things that should inhibit your ability to work. They 100% do. And, and I think rightly so, because I think that you get one shot at every moment in your child's life. I get to go to work every day for 40 or 50 years, but in, in, those, in, the, in the areas where you get input into the system, I really don't want to miss that. Certainly at this point, I don't want to miss that. Um, so again, I, I have felt incredibly selfish in retrospect, looking back at who I was and what I did. And now I just do a lot more being present. And sometimes that's hard because I still want to be on my phone. I still want to check my email. I still want to talk with coworkers, but Especially in the last two months, I've just been present.
Have a great one. Talk to you guys later.